Can you guys see my screen? Yes, 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 yes. Um, can you put it in full screen, please? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Whenever are you guys ready? I don't know if my video is on. No, I, I can see you. And I don't know. They were, I don't know what's going on. Man. I mean, my camera, my camera is on, but I don't think uh, you guys can see me. The, pres the presentation is uh, right now up. We can't see it. OK. Now you can, yeah? Yeah. But I don't know what's going on with my camera. It's charging. Is um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now we can see you. Oh, yeah. OK. So whenever you guys are ready, I can uh, start with my presentation. Um, okay, let's wait two minutes. Okay, sure. So in order to let Okay, uh, we start now. Uh, well, we are uh, starting with the session three, solid state materials, electron devices, and integrated circuits materials. And this time we have a virtual presentation. Uh, is Nicolas Enrique Vasquez Barragan, who is uh, going to talk about significance of the subject temperature on the physical properties on RF sputter uh, SP2T3 thin films. Uh, please begin. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, that brief uh, presentation of myself. So um, what I wanted to uh, firstly say is that I'm um, give a, a brief background of me. And I'm a PhD candidate um, studying at will who is doing uh, his PhD at the Autonomous University of Querétaro. And I'm currently doing an um, uh, internship at the University of New Mexico right now. Well, as you already said, the title of this presentation is um, Significance of the Substrate Temperature on the Physical Properties of RF Sputter Antimony Telluride Thin Films. Okay, this is the uh, the content of my presentation which includes the, the uh, introduction, methodology, structural properties of the thin films, uh, morphological characteristics of the thin films, the opt optical characterization, and the uh, electrical characterizations. And to conclude, I'm going to talk about the uh, most relevant findings of this work at the end of this presentation. OK, um, this material is a uh, is a well-known type e semiconductor for its use in solid state devices such as sensors, thermoelectric generators, photodiodes, and uh, solar cells. These applications for these materials 
are related to the physical properties of this material, which it, which it has a high figure of merit and an narrow band gap of 0 0.3 electron volt. Well, along with other um, uh, physical properties such as a high high current concentration, low resistivity, and um, high chemical stability. Well, um, this material has been grown by different or several uh, techniques such as MBE, electrodeposition, PLD, among others. But uh, one mm, technique that has attracted the attention lately to grow this material is uh, through the RF splittering process, mainly by two reasons. It produces high quality thin films, and two, it offers uh, precise control over the growth rates and exceptional uniformity across large areas. Which, uh, which basically means that you can control the thickness of the layer like with very high precision. So um, the application for this material in our future work is to incorporate this layer in the back counterpart of uh, cadmium tellurous soil cells, which um, previous studies have, uh, have demonstrated that the incorporation of this semiconductor in the back contact have improved has improved the performance of the of this device, um, especially talking about the um, the efficiency of the device. So that's why we are studying uh, the properties of this material because we want to incorporate this material in the back contact of this uh, of this device. So uh, when it comes about the methodology and how I mean how. Uh, did we grow the uh, the thin films? Well, obviously we use the RF the RF splittering method, in which we have the uh, growth chamber right here, where we uh, have the substrate uh, in the uh, upper part, and at the bottom we have the uh, target, which is uh, a splitter. All these parameters were kept constant. Were kept constant. The pressure, the power, the time, and the argon flow were kept all constants constant. The only thing was that was changed was the substrate temperature. We use a, a substrate temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and 350 Celsius uh, in order to get uh, two different samples. One deposited at 3 uh, Celsius and the uh, and another with uh, 350 Celsius. We can clearly see that there's no difference. There's no visible difference between the two, but obviously there are, there are difference um, when it comes to the uh, uh, the microstructure on the sample. Okay, uh, moving on to the uh, structural properties. Here we have the XRD patterns of the uh, of the films that were run at two different uh, substrate temperatures. Here we have uh, an intense peak in the sample grown at 300 Celsius. We have an intense peak that is around uh, uh, 45 degrees that indicates a highly dense uh, area with a uh, 0, 15 uh, orientation, whereas the um, sample grown with the high substrate temperature, I mean 350, we have a high intense peak with an orientation of 1, 0, 10. We can appreciate that these two different, uh, these two patterns are completely different from each other. This is, uh, well, obviously the substrate temperature uh, has uh, an influence in the uh, in the contribution of the crystals on these uh, samples, but the question he here is why we have an intense peak here around 45, and why we have an intense peak around uh, 30, 37. Well, this might be related with the growth orientation because the growth orientation of a crystal depends on its surface energy, which is influenced by the deposition parameters. But uh, since we kept the rest of the parameter constant and the only parameter we changed was the substrate temperature, so the substrate temperature uh, caused, a, caused a difference between the... Uh, caused a, caused a, uh, um, a difference in the surface energy of each... Uh, of each sample. Okay, moving on to the uh, structural parameters, we calculated the um, the crystal size, the micro strain, and this location density using the uh, the most intense peaks in the in the samples. 
uh, for instance, we have here the uh, we have here a crystal size of, of 30 nanometers. And we have a, here a crystal size of 70 nanometers. Well, we have a, a low, a high, big, uh, a bigger crystal size here in this sample because we have a, a lower F, F, a WHM value because this, these two parameters are inversely proportional. Uh, which means that the uh, a higher uh, or a bigger crystal size means a, a better uh, crystalline quality. Which means that with a higher degree of, of crystallinity, we can find a, um, lower values of microstrain and its location uh, density due to a relaxation in the crystallization. And lastly, we, we have here the uh, thickness of the samples, which obviously there is a, a decrease in the thickness when we increase the substrate temperature passing from 389 to 332. This decrement in the thickness uh, might be related to the uh, T desorption of the thin film due to the established growth conditions. Moving on, we also have the uh, uh, Raman spectra of the thin films in which uh, we can see, in, in, in which we can clearly see three different, um, three different signals in both samples. One located around 65, the other one located around 110, and the last one located around um, 160. Um, these three Raman modes are attributed to the um, antimony telluride uh, Raman modes found in the rhombohedral structure. But clearly, we can hear a minor Raman mode, which is uh, associated with the A. E1 mode that represents a, a, a symmetric stretching along the C-axis in the hexagonal crystallinity of tellurium. This means that um, that uh, uh, a growth temperature of 300, we can find a segregation of tellurium, but we, when we increase the substrate temperature, we, ir, we suppress the evolution of this Raman mode of the segregation of tellurium. For the... Uh, Morphological characteristics, we have uh, uh, same uh, images, which both of them uh, are characterized by uh, rough surfaces with a compact uh, structure, which means that there are no pinholes or voids or flaws throughout the, their surfaces with the presence of well-formed grains. These grains present an anonflex shape, and obviously there is an, an, an enlargement of the grains when we increase the substrate temperature for 300 to, to uh, 350, passing from 100 nanometers to 130 nanometers. Um, when it comes about the optical characterization, we have a, a transmission spectra of these two thin films. We can... Uh, we can clearly say that um, these two film act, act are, are as um, uh, well absorbent layers in a working region from 300 nanometers to 1100 nanometers. Um, this, um, this optical characterization tells us that uh, this um, material can be used uh, in the uh, in a solar cell because uh, it can absorb the uh, wavelengths that the uh, cadmium tellurium layer cannot absorb. Um, lastly, we have the electrical characterizations characterization in which we have the current concentration, the mobility, and the resistivity. Uh, clearly, we can see that there is an increase in the uh, current concentration in one order of magnitude from 18 to 19. Uh, this might be related to the suppression of the T segregates that this uh, sample presented, as I mentioned in the Raman characterization. Also, we can clearly see an increase or an increment in the mobility from 1.80 to 5.85 which is uh, which uh, could be related to the increase in the grain size, uh, which I mentioned in the uh, morphological morphological characterization, because there is an increment in the grain size when the substrate when the substrate temperature increases. And lastly, we have the resistivity right here, 
which uh, we can clearly see uh, a decrease in this value. Well, there is a decrease in this value because we have a uh, high, high con concentration and mobility, which means that these two values are related to the resistivity in an uh, inversion, inversionally proportional way, which means that for uh, high values of carrier concentration and high values of, high, of mobility, we can find a, a, lower a low resistivity. Well, for the uh, conclusions, we can say that uh, the combination of a zero optical transmittance in a green science between 100 nanometers and 1 theta nanometers, along with a high carry concentration and a low resistivity in the antimony tellurite thin films fabricated at a substrate temperature of 350 Celsius, satisfies physical requirements for its applicability as a buffer layer in a cadmium tellurium based solar cells. These are some references that I use in my presentations, and um, that's all. I just tried to be as brief as I could. And um, OK, I'm open to any suggestions or questions you guys may have about this presentation. Thank you. Do you have questions? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes, the material, uh, the material can be used uh, Use it on another uh, solar source process of fabrication, not, not only the one that you are um, showing here uh, can be used okay. in another source. Okay, you're you're saying that if this if this material could be used in another type of solar cell? Yes. Okay. As far as I know, uh, mostly this material can be used just in organic solar cells such as this one, right? But, uh, uh, well, that's, that's that's one thing as far as I know, but uh, I have to uh, go deep down more in knowledge to know if this material could be um, used in other types of solar cells. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, questions, uh, people who are online? Well, Nobody online. Well, well, I have a couple of questions. The first one okay. is how many experiments did you make? How many uh, layers did, did you deposit? It? How many layers? Do you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How many experiments? Yes. Yeah. How many what? Sorry? I mean, it's only one, just one layer at 300 and one. Oh yeah, system. yeah. That's what I did. That's exactly what I did. One layer of of antimony telluride oh. <laughs> at 300 Celsius, and one layer of antimony telluride at 350 Celsius. Okay. Well, I think it's gonna uh, it's gonna be it's a big difference between both samples, and you have to try a little more experiments. Oh, also, yeah. that's, that's maybe exactly what I'm working an on. intermediate temp temperature. Uh, second question is, uh, you have uh, different orientations. Yep. Yes, okay. yes exactly. Layers. In, in a radical different spectra yep. from both of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what do you expect? Why do you think, you, you said uh, the lower one is the black one, you mean uh, 0015 is the orientation, yes? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're, you're, you're asking, okay, you're asking me why there's a huge difference between these two patterns? Uh, well, I want to make a couple of questions, but, but the first one is would be why is this huge difference? Okay. Let me let me get my charger because uh, my my, battery, my computer is running out battery. So real quick, yeah. I'm going to answer that question. One minute, please. Okay, so um. The difference, what I think between the two, is that um, well, as far as I know, the uh, a thin film 
is um, consist of uh, of the lower energy planes or deflection planes, right? Thermodynamically speaking, but um, certain difference uh, when we change uh, some par parameters during the deposition, such as um, the substrate temperature, can influence the surface energy of the uh, of the crystals. For example, um, what I'm thinking right now is that the uh, a substrate temperature of 300 Celsius produce uh, a changes in the surface energy of the material because uh, as far as I know the lowest uh, the lowest energy crystals are one zero ten and uh and another one that I don't remember right now but um there's a there's a difference between the uh, surface energy uh, when we um, change the uh, the substrate uh, temperature and also there are like um there are, there are like uh, there's no uh, studies at all about the surface energy of the crystals attributed to the uh, to this sem semiconductor, which is um which is an unexplored field. So well, basically, uh, that's what I'm thinking is, right now. Uh, I would. <clears throat> you have a highly oriented uh, mm -hmm. layer at 300 degrees. Yeah. That wonders me why you are using uh, an amorphous substrate. I understand. And yeah, you have an amorphous yeah. signal on the second. If yeah. well, we don't have any, too much time now, but I think uh, uh, you you should have made more experiments to reproduce uh, to find the intermediate. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So if there is no more time, if there are no more questions, we can uh, we appreciate your contribution. Thank you very much for this time and thank you for um, attending my presentation. I hope you have a good day. Uh, OK, thank you. Yeah. I think the next one is Santa Luisa. OK. It, it, it's, 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 Okay. Oh, Nicolas, uh, could you please uh, turn off your? Ah, th thank you so much. Oh, also, we, uh, Annalisa, could you please uh, open your uh, video? If you could be able, please. Yes. Can uh, you see my presentation? Yeah, it, it looks nice. Looks fine. Okay. Um, my eyes. Can I start? Can you turn on your camera, please? Ah, yes, shoot. Sorry. Thank you. But you can. You are. There it is. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, next presentation is going to be made by Ana, Ana Luisa Perez Calvillo. Uh, she's talking uh, from Silvestad Querétaro. She's talking a story of the, on the after the current properties of the heterostructure zinc oxide, uh, cadmium sulfur, and cadmium telluride for applications in cadmium telluride solar cells. OK, uh, please start. Hey, Annalisa, sorry, we're not seeing your presentation. Can uh, you share your presentation? Yes. Check your screen. We're see seeing your screen. It was, uh, but as you started with the camera, it's went away. Um. You need to select PowerPoint. Mm, yes, I selected. Uh, ah. OK. There's your presentation. Yeah. Good presentation now, please. There, you see my presentation? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, 
Hello, good morning. My name is Ana Luisa Perez. I will be speaker today for the paper name study on the optoelectronic properties of the ethereal structure zinc oxide, cadmium sulfide, cadmium telluride for its application in cadmium telluride solar cells. And uh, here are the names of the people who collaborated in this work. And as an introduction, I would like to start um, and we know that cadmium telluride is a material used widely in solar cells application do its good properties as 1.45 electron volts band gap and a high absorption coefficient the typical configuration of a cadmium telluride solar cells consists in a substrate generally of glass covered by a oxide conductive transparent layer, next followed by a N-type semiconductor and a P-type semiconductor, and finally a metal contact. And usually the cadmium telluride solar cells uh, consist of a ethereal junction with cadmium sulfide used as a window layer material and the cadmium telluride as a absorption absorbing layer. One of the problems that these cells present is the loss of the light by absorbing the photons in the sulfide in the cadmium sulfide layer, which limits the device performance. In order to reduce the absorption by the cadmium sulfide, it is necessary to reduce the thickness of this film. But studies in this area have shown that with thinner cadmium sulfide films, the performance of the device is degraded because shunting in between the oxide conductive transparent layer and the cadmium telluride. As an alternative, uh, one solution proposed is the incorporation of high resistance transparent layers between the oxide conductive transparent layer and the cadmium sulfide to improve the morphology of the cadmium sulfide films and reduce the current density between these two materials. Zinc oxide uh, was proposed to, to this layer because of the excellent optical and electrical properties as a high resistance, high, high resistance transparent layer. The methodology employed begins with the cleanance of the substrates and the zinc oxide deposit by radiofrequency sputtering with conditions of 50 watts at 300 Celsius degrees for 20 minutes. Next, the cadmium sulfide deposition by chemical bath. Um, we start with conditions used in the group of work and then we vary the concentration of precursors of ammonium chloride and urea in order to um, find the best concentrations that give us the films with the ideal properties for its applications. So the methodology is very simple. We start uh, preparing the solutions and then the reaction conditions are 90 degrees uh, for one hour. And we add the substrates and then add the solutions to begin the reaction. Next, the growth of the cadmium telluride films by closed space sublimations is starting the process by adding 0 0.05 grams of cadmium telluride to the source, then place above the substrate and build the system of deposit. The deposition conditions were 1500 Celsius degrees for the, substra for the substrate, 6 105 Celsius degrees for the source for 10 minutes. After the cells were submitted to a thermal treatment in order to improve the properties, and we use a 
magnesium chloride solution and immerse the samples in uh, one minute. We also try three different uh, temperatures for the thermal treatment at 380, 390 and 400 Celsius degrees for 25 minutes. And finally, the samples were etched with phosphoric nitric acid for one minute. The results uh, for the structural analysis for cadmium sulfide films, uh, we have that difference in the crystallite size, the location density and microstrain were, were obtained at different concentration of precursors. We obtain a average crystal size of 19 nanometers and the lowest uh, crystal size were 13 nanometers and the conditions were urea 0.075 molar and ammonium chloride 0.15 molar. Also, the X-ray diffraction patterns show that the 111 and 311 planes align well with the cubic structure of cadmium sulfide films and the 002 and 112 planes match with the hexagonal structure of the CDS films. This indicates that we have the both phases present in our films and the rest of the diffractions correspond to the transparent conductive oxide. We use fluor ducting oxide or IFTO. For the Raman spectroscopy of the CDL films, we have the presence of the first and second longitudinal optical modes at 305 and 610 centimeters to the minus one, which means a good quality and high crystallinity of the films. The optical characterization show a high transmittance percentage of above 70 percentage and uh, absorption age, age at 500 nanometers, which is characteristic of the cadmium sulfide. Also, we can discuss that at higher concentrations of urea, the films become darker and the transmittance percentage is lower. We also calculate the band gaps and uh, for different concentrations of precursors. For urea 0.1 and 0.075, the values obtained are very according to the literature for bulk cadmium sulfide. But for urea 0.05 molar, we obtain a value of 2.5 electron volts, which means that this film will allow the reduction of the photon's uh, absorption in this layer. For the cadmium telluride films, we uh, realize some characterizations. First, the X-ray diffraction patterns show uh, planes that correspond to the cubic phase of the cadmium telluride and also the good intensity of the of the peaks shows a uh, good quality of, of the films obtained. We also realize the Raman spectroscopy and obtain different signals corresponding to telluride, the ones that are A1 and and I1 at, at 100, uh, nearly 120. Uh, these signals correspond to the telluride because of the ter thermal treatment that improves a um, telluride rich layer in the surface of the films which we can confirm with these results. Also, we see a very low signal correspond to the cadmium telluride at 165 centimeters to minus one.
which is according to the reference of bulk cadmium telluride. For the photovoltaic results of the devices, we can see an increase in the efficiency of the devices of 2% when zinc oxide is added to the structure of the cell. The maximum efficiency we obtained was 6.65%, and while the, the other photovoltaic parameters are, are good in, in, in our cells. We also uh, obtained that the best temperature for the annealing process was 390 Celsius degrees, which improved the properties of the cell. And for the conclusions, we have that the CDL films were obtained successfully, successfully varying the concentration of precursors and the best concentration or the concentrations that give us the ideal properties were 0.05 molar of urea and 0.125 molar of ammonium chloride. And also the incorporation of a high resistance uh, layer of zinc oxide uh, increased the efficiency of the devices by 2%, as I mentioned. And the thermal treatment at 390 Celsius degrees for 25 minutes show an, in, an increase in the photovoltaic parameters and, and an enhancement in the device performance. Also, as a future work, we, we have to optimize the thermal treatment and the concentration of the solution, maybe that could be affecting the cells, and also study deeper the growth uh, conditions for the zinc oxide in order to obtain different uh, thickness of this film and study how this film uh, conditions uh, could affect or enhance the properties of the cell. Here are some reference I use for this paper and thank you for your attention. Uh, questions for people connected in the... Somebody wants to make a questions. Well, I have one couple of questions. This one, well, you showed in CDS uh, different band gaps values. Yes. Uh, do you think it could be related to noise or the uh, measurement parameters, or do you have an explanation for those differences? Mm. Uh, well, I don't think uh, there is noise in the measurements. I I correlate these results uh, to the to the results obtained to the other results obtained because these, for example, the value at two point five electron volts for the for this film we obtain the the best efficiency. And also, we obtain the maximum transmittance percent percentage. This film was the thicker film. I I didn't present the the thickness of the films, but we also measure measure that parameter. And this film was the thicker, so I think this band gap value could be um, improve the the film of cadmium sulfide and. This is why we obtain this film, the best uh, results. Well, uh, more than noise in the measurement, I wanted to mean uh, uncertainty of the measurements. But how do you explain 2.4 electron volts? Why is the band gap lower in the first measurement? Mm. I. I don't understand the question. So, I mean, why? Well, why do you have a lower band gap value? What is the uh, reason? Okay, uh, the lower band gap value could be attributed uh, to the um, also the structural 
um, results. We see this film, um, we obtain the, the structural parameters like I show here. It was for the for the film with the lower crystal size, uh, the more dislocation density and the more micro strain. So I attribute that this lowered in the band gap to maybe these defects in the film. Yeah, you have to study that. Well, we don't have many time, much time for somebody may have short questions. Well, I have more questions, but you, we don't have more time. So thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, and <laughs> OK, and the next one is. Este, si quieres seleccionar las cosas en, el, en la pantalla y, y yo intento poner el punto okay. virtual. Sí, gracias. Bueno, tenemos el siguiente, es eh, Carlos Alfredo Pérez Castro Ortega, que va a presentar el talk How Glass and Signal How Glass Layer Techniques to Improve radiation hardening of NMOS devices. Please start. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Carlos Alfredo Castro Ortega. I'm with Dr. Monica Linares Aranda. We are working on hourglass and semi hourglass layout techniques to improve radiation hardening of NMOS device at the, in our in Puebla. Uh, here's a, uh, the content of my presentation. Uh, introduction uh, radiation hardening techniques uh, the proposed MOSFET layout and the comparison of results of simulations and also conclusions. Now, when we are talking about radiation environments uh, that affect the electronic systems, we can imagine the, for example, the space is the radiation environment that can have the solar irradiation, the galactic gold rays, uh, also the the radiation of the Earth and the Van Allen belts. That, that uh, radiation can affect uh, electronic systems in space. Also, we have uh, radiation environments at the energy nuclear, nuclear centers. Uh, and in medicine, we have the radiation environments of new applications of medicine now, uh, as seen here. Now, the radiation in semiconductors can be seen as these three effects in there. They can be seen as total ionization dose of displacement damage and a single event effect. In this world, we are talking about the total ionization dose effects of, on semiconductors. Uh, as seen here, the total ionization dose uh, can generate ionization and free spotting in the silicon oxide of the semiconductors. And this ionization uh, that create electron hole pairs uh, that can have a build up of charge or defects. And the, the problem is that the device radiation by this, uh, by this ionization. Uh, the principal effect that the, the that this cap is the leakage current of the or of device that can cause major failure to mechanism digitalysis 
and can be avoided by process design or layout. Also, we can have gain degradation of of the of the devices, producing serious problems for analog ICs and parametric for uh, functional features. Now, the method that we are using in this work is the reducing hardening by design method. Uh, the techniques that use this method uh, don't change the fabrication process of the uh, of the devices, in this case, the transistors, and they are needed to decrease the TFX on the basis of circuits, mainly parasitic currents the, between the end doping regions of the silicon dioxide interface, as seen here in these two figures. Uh, now, uh, with the reduced channel offset thickness of newer technologies, uh, in this uh, less than seven nanometers, uh, the TAD effects appears at the silicon solar trace isolation oxide interface, as seen uh, specifically here in the first image, when we have a uh, parasitic uh, channel between the source and drain of the, of the devices. We are proposing new layout techniques. Uh, the principal layout that we are proposing is a harmless transistor, as seen here at the, at the left. But we are comparing this transistor with a rectangular transistor and a an hybrid of what? That is the semi transistor that have both the Horvath transistor and rectangular just uh, geometries. Uh, we are basing this, uh, this new proposed layout by, uh, by the diamond transistor. The diamond transistor is a well-researched uh, radiation hardening by design device that we are modifying to make uh, the or our own tradition hardening devices. Uh, we are uh, making special emphasis on the parasitic transistor channel resistance at the edge of our devices. Uh, to, to make these comparisons, we are making simulations of the device uh, with the following conditions. We are using a commercial human C 180 nanometer Bolsimos parameter for the simulations. Uh, we are obtaining principally uh, dry current versus gate voltage uh, curves at the threshold region to observe the off current of the device. And we are simulating two cases of radiation. The per radiation positive charge at the interface of silicon offset that have this that have this as the number, this value, and the positive charge per radiation that have this value of the charge at the interface of the oxid silicon. Uh, the results of interest of these simulations are the leakage current of the devices and the saturation current gain of the devices after pre and after radiation. Now, uh, how, I, how we are doing the proposed devices for issue hardening. Here we can see uh, the layout of the power system, and we can see that they have uh, greater channel length at the edge of the device here and here than the, at the center of the device. With this greater channel length, also we are increasing the precipitate transistor resistance that are forming at these uh, regions. Uh, we are using the parallel association of MOSFETs with different channel X effect, also also known as PAMLE, to make this uh, to make the this radiation hardening. Uh, here we can see some results of the simulations of the three devices. We have a rectangular transistor and hardless transistor and a semi hardless transistor to make the comparison. Pre and post radiation, uh, as we can see here. Uh, at pre-radiation uh, simulation, we have uh, almost the sim similar currents as uh, currents at the off at the off state of the devices. But after including the port radiation uh, charge at the interface, we can see that uh, all the devices have current leakage. But the rectangular transistor have a current leakage of um, more or less as the one order of magnitude higher than the of both devices that we are proposing. Now, to know the effect of the channel length for this uh, radiation hardening, we are uh, we are using a comparison of effective length of both whole glass and semi whole glass. Here for the whole glass, we are making a simulation of a whole glass transistor and two 
rectangular transistor with different lengths. Uh, the length of this rectangular transistor I, is one, the effective length of the device making the ideas uh, this equation, and the other is the maximum length of the device uh, seen here with the upper letter B of the image. Uh, with those two lengths of rectangular, we make the simulations, and as we can see here, the pre and post radiation results can be seen as the holograms have better uh, radiation hardening results than the two rectangular uh, transistors. We make the same comparison, but uh, with the semi as the transistor, and we obtain similar results on both on both times. Now we are making also a numerical comparison of the current degradation of the devices. We are using this uh, figure merit to the current degradation index, as in here in this equation. With this index, the higher the number, the less the degradation of the device. So, as uh, seen here in the table. We can see that the better performance are made by the hardware transistor. Uh, the second is the semi hardware transistor. On um, all the rectangular transistors have similar uh, numeric comparisons, but the rectangular transistor with the uh, length equal at the minimum of the technology have the better response of all the all the other rectangular transistors. Uh, with this device, also we are making a cooperation of the current gain, uh, the saturation region. Uh, as we can see here, we normalize the uh, drain current by the relation aspect of the three devices. And as seen here, we can see that the hardware transistor in red have the the more the highest gain, current gain at the saturation region of the devices. To to see what happened in, in the devices, we make uh, simulations. Uh, here we can see the current density simulations of the three devices. We are simulating the side view of the device as seen here in this in the region. And as we can see here, in three in these three regions, we can see the parasitic channels that are forming after the radiation uh, uh, charge. Uh, assume the rectangular transistor that is at the bottom have the major the formation of the parasitic channel comparing to the hourglass and the semi hourglass transistor. We also uh, are making simulations of the electric field of devices. Here is simulations of the channel. As we can see here, compared to the rectangular transistors, the another uh, the hourglass and semi hourglass have a curvature of the electric fields of the channel. And this curvature can be seen here at the, at the angle of the channel. Also, we can see that they have a peak of magnitude of the electric field at the center of the devices. Uh, with this, we can see that the electric field is taken away of the edge of the devices, and it's concentrated only in the center of the device. Uh, the conclusions for this work is that the were presented two new structures of N MOSFET uh, devices. We are comparing these devices with the rectangular transistor, and they present a reduction on off current degradation at the radiation effects. Uh, and using the current degradation index, the, in the successful record, we have the the hardware transistor have 52 percent better performance than the rectangular transistor, and the semi hardware have 48 uh, better performance. Also, the hardware transistor had 52.18% more drain current at the saturation region than the rectangular transistor, and the semi hardware transistor had 17.83% uh, more drain current than the rectangular. Also, with this have a trade off, uh, the gate area is increasing in the both devices. The hardware have an increase. Uh, of 1.2 square micrometer area compared to the minimal rectangular of the technology, and the semi have 0.8 square micrometer increase in area compared to the minimum area of the rectangular transistor. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Questions? Questions? Questions from people connected. Oh. 
No, 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 no questions. No, 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 no questions. Sorry. Okay, I have a couple of questions. First one, did you plan to fabricate the devices yes, physically? We, yes, we are planning to fabricate the devices. Uh, there, there are, uh, um, we are sending to, um, to do OMC uh, foundry or layout, and we are waiting for the devices to send us. But yeah, they are este, in process of fabrication. Yes, what are, uh, okay. S how do you, how do you plan to measure the radiation resistance of the devices? Uh, we, are, uh, we are hoping to use these devices at the evening here in Mexico mm -hmm. uh, to make a uh, radiation experiments. And with the, after the radiation pre and after radiation, we are making measurements of the uh, current radiation of the device. Okay. And, okay, last question I have is the dimensions of the devices. They are mm -hmm. uh, how, how, what question? Uh, the dimensions, the, I think here. There are, there are big <laughs> ones, no? Uh, here, the, the dimensions of the devices are more or less one, one micrometer of width, so, and uh, the minimum length is so uh, the dot two micrometers. But the uh, seen here, the one point micrometers are the most uh, the large. But, but, but the smallest one is the, mo the uh, smallest micrometer. Yeah, uh, the, sm the small length of the devices. Okay, okay. and the more. Uh, is the larger dimension 1.2. Those are big devices compared to the new technology. Compared to the, we're, we're using this technology, they are big, but uh, we're hoping to use technologies all more uh, small to make another set of devices. Yes, but, but I mean, you, you can make your, the same simulation. If you simulate, you can simulate to smaller devices. If, if we use, uh, if we use another parameters, another commercial okay. technology parameters, we can make uh, more smaller simulations. Okay. okay. One more question, so somebody. Well, there are no more questions, so thank you. let's thank, thank the speaker. And the next one is here or is connected? Uh, it's go on. Can I go on, Komar? Hi, doctor. Good morning, everyone. Is audible, everyone? Can you listen to me? Yes, go Hello. Ahead. Yeah. Reset. You must have me. And can you turn on your camera, please? Wait, two minutes. Wait, two minutes. Yes, I'm just uh, uploading my app presentation just a second. Yes. Oh. We're watching now your presentation, Govan, but we, we cannot see your... You can see my presentation. No, we, we can see your presentation. It looks fine, but uh, we cannot see uh, your camera. So could you please turn it up? I'm, I'm... Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, we can see you now. Yeah, we can see your camera now, and also your yes, presentation. Yes, I'm, I'm I can see my presentation here. That's why I'm trying to connect. Just a second. Okay, okay. 
Well, uh, yes. Well, I'm going in you can, to, okay. to start. Uh, okay, start, doctor. This half a minute only. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going well, to talk I, about my topic. Me, uh, wait. Well, the next talk is going to be from Gohan Kuma. And he is talking about copper. Copper top thin oxide thin film prepared by Sojet deep coating technique for CO gas sensing. So, um, okay, please start your presentation. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my uh, paper, which is uh, based on the metal oxide semiconductor for a carbon monoxide gas sensing application. Today I'm going to cover about the principles of the gas uh, mechanism and the importance of the gas sensor and about my material thin oxide uh, introduction. Basically, the gas sensor plays an important role in a day to day life where uh, there are a lot of uh, toxic gases are present in the world. Uh, you can see here uh, there is a lot of pollution because of the the products we use day to day life and there is a lot of emission. These are the emission which causes the toxic gases and these toxic gases uh, causes a uh, lot of uh, disease first for the human and it it uh, it shows the importance that we have to monitor the gas in the environmental and the atmosphere and the industrial areas. So why carbon monoxide? If you see there are many gases in the world like uh, propane and ammonia and other gases but carbon monoxide is very dangerous. It can't be seen, it can't be smelled, it can't be heard but it can be stopped by using the monitoring the uh, using the gas sensor. Even the government has taken a step the role to in, uh, monitor the gas sensor in different uh, countries. You can see these are the uh, history of the recent gas uh, gas incidents, the carbon monoxide leak incidents, uh, where the people died and suffered and got admitted in the hospital. And these are the tabulation which represent the partial pressure uh, PPM uh, level at the different time interval. It causes the different symptoms, for example, the headache, discomfort, and uh, unconscious, nausea, fatal, and even causes to the death. <clears throat> so sensor, basically a sensor is a receive a signal and response with electric signal. What a, a sensor is device that produces a measurable response to change in a physical condition such as temperature, pressure, etc. If you see this side, whatever uh, the species, it can be converted, it can be converted, it will, it will be measured and it can be converted by using the transcription mechanism and converted as a signal processing and we can be used monitored. There are different types of sensor, IR sensor, metal oxide semiconductor sensor, fluorescent sensor and electrochemical sensor. Where the semiconductor sensor is a uh, very important for the gas sensor application compared to the other uh, other uh, sensor techniques. These are the justification of the semiconductors. Why we are using the semiconductor? Semiconductor materials are easy to miniaturize and rugged and reliable. It can be produced in uh, array to alloy sensing of multiple species simultaneously. And uh, semiconductor material consists of a lot uh, different types of materials such as the tin oxide, titanium oxide, and zinc oxide. Um, you can see the researchers uh, have showed that uh, the the parameters of response stability selectivity response time accuracy durable maintenance uh, compared to the other uh, sensor metal oxide sensors give a uh, good uh, excellent results so we are considering a semiconductor metal oxide for the gas sensor yeah. though they have a zinc oxide titanium oxide and many other uh, many metal oxide semiconductors but we choose a thin oxide is because of their uh, excellent properties a wide band gap of 3.6 electron volt it's a rutile most common st crystalline structure it is it is a has a high stability even it at uh, 200 to 500 degrees celsius it has a it, it can be operated and uh, tin oxide does not melt up to 2100 degrees celsius as crystal could not be grown from the melt and it is a polycrystalline wide band gap semiconductor the, the literature review shows that in the most of the gas sensing applications are successful at thin oxide where the, the blue color area shows that a high percentage of preparing the gas sensor by using the thin oxide. Though there are many gas sensors are prepared by thin oxide, there are there is a less sensing response and a less selectivity. To improve this, we are using the influence of doping. There are different materials, metals like indium, palladium and platinum and copper, gold, silver and nobium where everyone have a uh, different uh, properties and different uh, 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 selectivity and a good gas sensing response where the copper is the cheapest material when compared to the other other metals for the doping. So 
we are considering a copper as mentioned the copper enhances the sensitivity of tin oxide various gases including the reducing and oxidizing gases and copper doped tin oxide sensor known for their stability and sensitivity <laughs> gas sensing mechanism here the gas sensing mechanism uh, basically when the gas uh, of reacts with the sensor material while the when the sensor material is exposed to the air where the the oxygen in the air will interact with the material interact with the sensor material it extracts the electron and there will be a when they extract the electron there will be a, a formation of a depletion layer the resistivity will be there there will be a current flow there will be no current flow so there will be a no conductivity with that we can monitor that uh, there is no uh, toxic gases while when the carbon monoxide interacted with the sensing material it extra it intra injects the electron while the the depletion level get decreases when the grain boundary level get decreases there will be a conductivity out of flow of electrons so this is a mechanism of metal oxide gas metal oxide semiconductor gas sensors so methodology here in the past research i made a thin oxide nanoparticle powder nanopowders uh, so i i take the nanoparticle nanopowder and uh, I prepared a tin oxide sole gel solution by using a thin chloride, a 0.2 gram of tin oxide nanoparticle into 90 ml, 90 ml of tin oxide sole gel solution, and mixed until it get dissolved. And I started to uh, uh, take a glass substrate, and by using the dip coating uh, technique, which I used in the laboratory, and with uh, with uh, 30 seconds of interval, I was dipping the uh, tin oxide thin film by using the sole gel tin oxide solution, like. Uh, one immersion and two immersion and three immersion, which I made a uh, in the past research uh, thin film of tin oxide of uh, three immersions. While the three immersion shows a, a good uh, crystalline structure of the tin oxide, so I'm taking the tin oxide of the third immersion and I'm uh, aside parallelly I'm preparing the copper sole gel solution of 0.32 gram of silver nitrate and uh, dissolved in 100 ml of methanol mixed until it get dissolved and I'm doping the and I'm dipping the tin oxide thin film in a copper sol gel solution with the same interval of one immersion and two immersion and three immersion using the dip coating technique for the 30 seconds time interval and these are the steps uh, how i uh, deposit washing the glass substrate dry the substrate and cool the sample and uh, finally i, I dried it the sample with 450 degrees celsius in the furnace oven for one hour these are electrical characterization setup which are used in the laboratory to measure the carbon monoxide gas sensing condition carbon monoxide carbon monoxide gas operant taking temperature is 100 degrees celsius to 300 degrees celsius and concentration uh, will be around 500 ppm and this is the calculate this is a formula used for the calculating the sensing uh, sensing response where the sensing response is equal to the resistance the the gas present in the atmosphere minus the gas uh, the oxygen present in the uh, there is uh, the gas present in the atmosphere by the gas present in the uh, this is the response of the air minus uh, response of the air minus the gas measured in the gas measured response by the response of the gas uh, these are the results and discussion in um, xrd while the thin oxide thin flame uh, one immersion and two immersion there is no crystalline growth you can see properly there is no uh, a good Big, strong peak shift but if you see in the third immersion has a good uh, uh, prominent peak where the prominent peaks are 110 and 101 and uh, 211 by using these three important peaks uh, using the debussier equation we used to calculate the uh, crystalline uh, size where the one immersion has a 3.54 nanometer and the two immersion have a 5.99 nanometer and three immersion have a 9.7 nanometer these are uh, these uh, are matched with the jctps of the number 291484 indicate that orthorhombic crystalline structure which match perfectly it increases in crystalline state with more immersion due to the enhanced crystalline and grain growth copper ion introduced strain reducing interplanar spacing with more immersion cycle strain accordance with lattice rearrangement relaxing causes a peak shift the same analysis of a uh, copper doped thin oxide for the three immersed three different Im multiple immersion where the in a thin flame of the thin oxide it has a shows a good spherical uh, uh, spherical and agglomeration are seen but while when uh, after doping with the copper the the thin oxide flame is covered with the copper and the spherical is getting disappeared slowly slowly and the uh, in the immersion two immersion three there will be a uniformly the copper have a uh, spreader over the tin film and edx which confirms the the copper and the tin have a tin are present in the uh, material 
by using the j image the particle size j image software i used measure the particle size the 1 and 2 and 3 motion the particle size 75 nanometer and 1 or 3 nanometer and 145 nanometer the particle size increases with more immersion indicating the growth and coalescence the particular three immersion predominantly spherical significantly uniform growth as i said before the eds analysis confirmed the presence of the copper tin and oxygen and the successful incorporation of copper into a thin oxide lattice have been verified by using the edx and sem analysis morphological analysis these are uv properties you can see the uh, property you the uh, the transmittance for the three uh, three samples with the one two and immer three immersion where across the 70% or uh, most of the samples are 70% transparent and indicating as uh, a good optical uh, transparency and uh, you can see from 300 to 400 nanometer there will be absorption edge and uh, the uh, the band gap will be calculated by using the tox plot you can see the one immersion have a 3.03 and two immersion have 3.13 electron volt and the three immersion have a 3.03 electron volt the white can band gap observed typical for the semiconductor metal oxide materials these band gap will be uh, you enhance the uh, high sensitivity and high selectivity the slight variation in band gap energies for the different immersion cycle indicates the copper ion incorporation doesn't significantly alter electronic structure and band gap while the tin oxide, the uh, usual band gap is 3.6 electron volt. These are my uh, sensing properties. It clearly shows that one immersion and two immersion and three immersion. While the three immersion show a high uh, sensitivity when exposed to the carbon monoxide, uh, uh, carbon monoxide uh, gas concentration. It is due to the, the number of uh, molecules present above the sensor material. It causes a uh, uh, it causes a uh, uh, more conduction while the one and two immersion uh, it will takes a little time to respond at uh, if you see the 100 degrees celsius operating temperature there will be no sensing response while the 200 degrees celsius have a little response and 300 degrees celsius operation just shows more high sensitivity why here the copper dopant acts as a catalyst and promoting a gas absorption reaction on the film surface and it creates a defect sites and oxygen vacancies and enhance the gas absorption and, and increasing the available sites for the gas interaction. The number of immersions affects the film structure and gas sensing performance. The copper doping significantly improves the sensitivity to CO gas surface of pure tin oxide. In future, uh, I'm planning to uh, dope with uh, other materials like uh, uh, silver and uh, uh, cobalt to compare all the metals which gives a high influence sensitivity and selectivity finally i conclude with the extra the extra the samples are uh, in a higher uh, crystalline size of uh, below the 9.79 nanometer the morphology structure control growth with increasing the immersion cycle and spherical particular tree immersion and the uv reflection band gap will be calculated by using the tox plot for all the samples the film with three immersion, the, the more immersion, the more layer achieve the high sensitivity for the carbon monoxide around 1137.70 at 500 ppm carbon monoxide concentration. These are these findings opens uh, further research and development in the gas sensing technology and promising a prospect for the environmental monitoring, industrial safety and uh, automatic exhaust gas analysis. Thanks for the Konasit and the Sinvestor uh, and CC for uh, giving me the opportunity to present my uh, presentation. Questions for the audience? Questions from the audience? Questions from people connected? Is there a question online? Questions people online? Well, there are no, I think there, there are also no questions. Well, I have one question uh, for you. Uh, you are doing the sensor for CO uh, carbon monoxide. How yes, is the sensitivity to CO2? I mean, whenever you have CO carbon monoxide, you have carbon dioxide also. So how yes. do you discriminate? The it's a good question, doctor. The carbon dioxide, uh, which gives the uh, it injects the more electrons when come when comes to the carbon monodioxide, where the the sensing uh, enhancement will be more increased when carbon dioxide will be detected. 
dioxide because of the more oxygen present in the carbon dioxide it enhances the uh, the oxygen molecules which in interact with the sensor material it gives uh, more conductivity okay because we have carbon dioxide is not poisonous only is in high concentrations in the atmosphere so thank you okay somebody another questions more questions well if there are no more questions we appreciate the speaker and we have a uh, it's five minutes for the next one How's your presentation? Yes, sister. Pues, ¿Cuál es el Ah, ok. Sí, son dos. ¿Cuál es Son estas dos flechitas. Este es un apuntador, pero normalmente no se ve. Si gustas apuntar a él. Sí, pues sí. Muy rico. Sí, Sí, voy, voy. Una antena de la antena que te estaba antes. Bueno, esto ya no es Ok, vamos a esperar dos minutos para. Bueno, este es. Tú eres. Sí, es la penúltima. Ah, tú vas a dar los siguientes. Ok. de la presentación
let's start now. Uh, we have a uh, next talk is by Dr. Odin Reyes Vallejo. Uh, he is going to be copper oxide being film deposited by microwave assisted chemical gas deposition. Uh, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, thank you for the space on the opportunity. And when this is part of the uh, work I did uh, three or four years ago in my PhD. So, uh, sorry if I forgot some specific tools of, of this. But uh, when well, this is the first report in this kind, uh, <coughs> previously I worked with uh, cuckoo oxide thin film deposition, but like conventional uh, chemical bath deposition. This is a convection process, no? in a liquid uh, state. Uh, well, uh, I, I was interested in this material in, in that time because cuprous oxide uh, is a material with an excellent opto optoelectronic properties. Uh, we can tune the band gap between 1.8 to 2.9 uh, electron volts. Uh, also, the uh, conductivity can be uh, tuned uh, around uh, 14 uh, orders of magnitude. So, this uh, makes this material very interesting for very different uh, kinds of applications. So, uh, focus on, on what, what I obtained in this uh, process, uh, that is uh, very thin films. Uh, some of the specific uh, applications that we can use these materials are, for example, in solar cells. Uh, actually, there are some reports in perovskite solar cells uh, in which uh, these materials is used as a whole transport layer. Uh, actually, the, the material is deposited by sprite pyrolysis or soil hair deposition, uh, achieving efficiency records uh, uh, about uh, 20 percent. Uh, another uh, thing that I, we can do with this kind of materials is, for example, photocatalytic process. In the first one, uh, for example, we can promote the evolution of hydrogen. But also another important aspect in this material is what, that we can uh, turn uh, or change the conductivity of in, the, in the material. Uh, by nature or naturally, this material tends to be a pizza material because of the copper vacancies. But uh, uh, making or using some uh, making some changes in the formula or in the deposition conditions, for example, in bioelectronic deposition, if we change the, the pH to an acidic uh, scenario, we can change the, the conductivity from pizza to, to N type. So this is very attractive because we can. Uh, change uh, a photocathode to a photoanode. This is uh, the evolution reaction of for hydrogen can be changed to, to oxygen. And in the other case, it, it can be used as a photocatalyst uh, to degrade uh, pollutants, or in this case, for example, to, to reduce uh, carbon dioxide and to promote the formation of, of methanol. Uh, this is a, non, um, a toxic material. This is a, a, an abundant material, actually, Chile or Mexico is rich in, in copper, so the, it's a, in, in some way it's a little cheap material. Uh, well, uh, when I started to, to work with this kind of materials, uh, only two groups in the in all the world was working with, with this. At least uh, they have uh, very good results or, or good results. Uh, because this material uh, it is deposited main, mainly in, in form of thin films by spin coating, el electrolyte deposition, uh, sputtering, or and other techniques. By this technique, chemical bath deposition is uh, very complicated because uh, copper oxide is very insoluble, insoluble in the in water. So it te tends to immediately uh, uh, deposit in, in, the, in the solution, avoiding the, the growth in the substrate. So uh, I use these two uh, res researchers as a as a basis. For example, in the case of the, the Chinese groups, they, they uh, use a complex denier in order to slow the rate of position, the rate formation of the material. But also, he used uh, fluorine uh, acid uh, in order to promote roughness in the substrate. So this roughness in the substrate promote the adherence of the material. But in my case, I, I wanted to work with solar cells and photocathodes, so I can use uh, this acid because it uh, removes uh, the FTO of the, match of the substrate. Uh, but it, for me, it was very important because I, I use our, I started to use this complex in that was a uh, sodium citrate. 
In the case of Grosanova, an Hungarian uh, researcher, he, he uh, proposed the use of Pierce film. In, in this case, he used uh, copper sulfide uh, around uh, 10 to 20 nanometers of this material to promote the adherence of the second of the second layer. In this case, the second layer is the, the copper sulfide. Th that I took that part of of, uh, of Grosanov. However, in the case of Grosanov, he obtained very uh, Thin films are around 100 nanometers to 200 nanometers, but he has a, a problem because the part of the material tends to to go away from the from the substrate. He he has a poor adherence. So taking in consideration in, in consideration this, I repeat experiments of both uh, groups uh, using the sodium citrate and the, the first film of the uh, copper sulfide. However, however the, I have said the, the films, but these were very opaque. So at least for my, for my application, it, it was not uh, good. So I propose uh, some, something else. The use of triethanolamine as a complexing agent, as a secondary complexing agent. So this, this is the process that I follow. In the, first, I use the uh, Grosanov process in which I deposit a uh, copper sulfide uh, around 10 to 20 nanometers by using uh, copper sulfate as a copper source, but also sodium uh, thiosulfate as a complexing as a, and as a sulfur uh, uh, source. Uh, this was what developed uh, or performed at around uh, 25 to 50 Celsius degrees. By, by two hours, and the pH was adjusted to around five with some drops of acetic acid. Then we cleaned this uh, first film uh, only with, with water because the other was very poor. Actually, we uh, touched it with uh, fingers or with a cotton. It is completely, completely removed. So then this first uh, film, what it introduced in the second bath, this is this is the my proposal, actually of my PhD. Uh, we use the, the formula more or less similar to the Chinese group, but including the tretanolamine. Th this tends to slow the rate of position at, uh, by increasing the complexion of the copper ions. So it allows me to, to grow the field. The field. We uh, did the, the solution. Uh, we had used the, the pH around 9.5 uh, by adding some uh, Sodium oxidroxen. Then we introduce this specific case uh, in a microwave reactor because nobody ha has, at least at this moment, nobody has uh, tried. So we perform uh, varying to two temperatures. We use uh, 65 and 70 Celsius degrees, and this three three times. We tested at uh, higher temperatures. How, or, or lower temperatures, however, we didn't uh, obtain uh, good quality films. These are the, the first results of the material. In all cases, as you can see, we obtain only, only uh, cuckoo oxide. The only difference is the, the way this crystallized. Uh, in all cases, uh, when we increase, or in both cases, when we increase the time deposition, we increase the, the thickness. So it's something well, well known. If you the reaction takes longer. The most problem is that the thickness was uh, uh, thicker. You know? So, uh, in this, what I was looking for is what what happened uh, or at what condition I can enhance a, a, a property. In this case, was was the conductivity. Uh, another thing to consider uh, re relevant in this uh, process is that as it's not a conventional heating process. Uh, in this case, as a convec convection process. Uh, I use microwave uh, assisted uh, heating. Uh, th this is very particular because it produces uh, the heat in, in the in the place. It is not from, for example, the vat to from the vat to, to the to the solution. In this case, is inside of the of the solution because the radiation radiation goes to the to the ions. So the ions tends to rotate and to promote uh, friction between them. And another aspect to consider is that we have uh, a, an electromagnetic field, so we have ions. So this ion responds to to the electromagnetic field, uh, and so it crystallizes in 
it probably can be crystallized in a different way to a conventional heating process. So the aspect that, that I would like to, to remark is that uh, in the case when we deposit at uh, 65 degrees, is we increase the orientation to the plane 200. Uh, this is very important because uh, this material presents uh, an, an anisotropy uh, of uh, whole mass, mass effective hole. So the, 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 the smaller uh, mass is reported for the plane 1 1. So if we obtain uh, films oriented to the plane 1 1, uh, we produce uh, high, higher conductivity films. That, that's what I, I am looking for. So in this case, as you, as you can see, is the, the, the beams deposited at 70 Celsius degrees are, are oriented more to the plane 111. At, at least with, with that, you can, you can see this. However, if we uh, calculate the texture coefficient, you, you can, it's more clear that when we increase the, the time at 65 Celsius degrees, we, we decrease the, the orientation to the plane 11 and we increase the orientation to the plane to zero zero. So uh, we obtain a, a decrease in the, in the conductivity when we increase the, the, the thickness. In the other case, we obtain uh, an opposite behavior. We obtain an increase in the plane one one and also an, an increase in the plane uh, to zero zero, but it's not so so big uh, uh, to the other uh, temperature. No? So if, if you see, we obtain a, a higher conductivity, which is around one order of magnitude high, higher no? to and in the case of the the other temperature is even two or, or three orders of, of magnitude no? this this is very interesting because uh, when you de develop a, a solar cell uh, you want uh, according to the the end type uh, material you try uh, you have to deposit uh, uh, and a second material or a big material, which is around two orders of magnitude uh, of the conductivity of the end type material. No? So we can control more or less the, the conductivity of, of the material. But also the important thing is in is this case. So here we ob observe that the thickness is, is increasing uh, more or less proportional to, to the time. However, in, in the second, in the when the temperature is around 70 degrees, the growth is uh, achieved almost in the first 30 minutes. So the second 50 or the second 30 minutes can be considered as a, or at least I, I consider it as a similar to the uh, as an analytic process. But in this case, it's a as an analytic process in a, in a liquid phase, but with the microgradation. So I, I, at least I, I consider this is the reason that I obtained a higher, a higher conductivity because, uh, well, this is a graphic form of the, of the table. You can see the, the plane one one t tends to, well, the red ones are for the 70 Celsius degrees. Uh, in this case, is the, to the plane one one, it tends to, to grow, but also we calculate the Urbach energy, which is related to the, to the disorder. So the disorder is increased when we increase the temperature, temperature uh, the time deposition at, at 70 degrees, but decreases uh, 75. So th that's what I think that uh, the radiation after that 30 minutes uh, tends to to promote the, the disorder. The, so it enhance, enhances the, the conductivity because uh, metal oxides uh, needs to, to have uh, defects uh, to promote uh, electrical conductivity. If we have, uh, for example, in this case, oxide, uh, two parts of copper and one copper and one part of oxygen, we will pr promote a, a, an insulator. No? So we, it's necessary the presence of the of defects. And this is a, a way you, you see no? the conductivity enhances by in at 70 degrees, uh, increasing the time deposition. So this is the, the morphology. Uh, in the case of 75 Celsius degrees, uh, we, oh, it is not very clear, but if we could do a, a zoom, uh, we could observe an increase in the particle size, which is related with, with the increase in the XXRD intensity peaks. But in the, in the case of uh, 70 Celsius degrees, we all observe the, the, the deterioration of the surface. This is a, a cracking of the surface of, of the particles, which promotes, or at least for me, promotes the 
an increase in, in the disorder and explains the, also the, the in, uh, increase in conductivity. Uh, in the case of uh, the optical characterization, we observed uh, a similar uh, decay in the transmittance around uh, 460 or 470, which is uh, proves that the band gap is more or less constant for all the all, all the samples, all the of, all of the all the peeps. Uh, we didn't observe uh, interference fringe or interconstructive interferences, so our films are very thin. Uh, we calculate the absorption co coefficient, and something to remark is that uh, for this material uh, deposited, but uh, other methods, the the in the absorption zone or region, uh, the the absorption coefficient is around uh, in the order of plus four. In my case, uh, by this method and the conventional method, we obtain films uh, with absorption coefficient uh, above uh, plus five. So our materials uh, present a higher band gap, but they have high, higher abs absorption co coefficient. So this is also very interesting, for example, for uh, tandem cells, because we our band gap is around two point uh, between two two point six and two point two point seven, and this is the, the way we calculate these uh, values. I didn't uh, place all them because of the of the space, but uh, as you can see, in, in all cases uh, the band gap is more or less constant, and in the case of the Urbach energy it decreases. Uh, when we use uh, 75 Celsius degrees and, and increase slowly uh, when we uh, use uh, 70 Celsius degrees. So at the end, this is the, the peer report in, in, its, in its type or in its kind. Uh, it, and all, all the explanation is related to the disorder, how, how we control or we promote the disorder in the peers. If we increase the PIPs, for example, in the case of 70 Celsius degrees, we promote uh, an increment in the electrical conductivity. And in the other case, we, we just, uh, promote uh, an increase in the resistivity. Uh, so at the end, this is very interesting, for example, for de developing photocathodes for hydrogen oxygen evolution, because the thickness uh, it, that is needed is around 100 to 300 nanometers. And if we want to use it for, for example, in a ferrocite solar cell, we have to decrease the thickness of the film because we are obtaining around 200 nanometers. So we need around 70 between, between 60 to 100 nanometers, which could, could be uh, done by uh, reducing the concentration of all the formula reactions. So I, I think it has uh, a potential to be used in, in different uh, applications. So this is all of my part. This is part of, of the team of my work. Uh, well, this is my contact. Uh, thank you very much. OK, we have <coughs> three minutes for questions. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question from when you research this uh, many years ago, so now there have been an increase of the research of these. Uh, all of mine. All, all of yes. uh, all. Uh, When I started, there was only four papers of this. Okay. Yeah. When I finished my PhD, it was around 10, but four were well, So oh. now, actually, there is a group, uh, a friend of mine is working on that. Uh, by, by conventional chemical battery position in Puebla. <laughs> But they work in golf process. They, they, they work in around five Celsius degrees, if I remember very well. Thank you. Okay. Question? Marilu? Me. <laughs> The, the position technique is microwave assisted. assisted. But uh, and when you report the so the position time, this time is uh, the position is chemical bath. No? Chemical bath. Into a microwave. Yes, we only changed from the conventional in a bath, conventional bath, to the microwave. Is the the commercial microwave oven. No, it's this one. This is the reactor. Reactor. 
It works or operates in a similar way to the to the to the microwave in the, in the house. It's the same uh, principles, actually the same uh, frequency. The, the only difference is that I place the the solution inside of the the reactor. Yeah, 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 but the equipment is not uh, like a commercial, no. Well, here, for example, in the lab, we can, we can uh, yes, place yes, uh, another question. Uh, you, you said that the conductivity increase with the uh, uh, effect concentration. Yes. But what, uh, what kind of effects? Uh, I, in this case, I didn't measure the tag or the kind of uh, defect, but it, but it is reported that the mainly uh, defect uh, that promote, uh, promotes the conductivity for this material is the copper oxide. Th there is a minimal uh, uh, fraction or, or reports that include, for example, uh, inter interstitial defects, but it, it is mainly by copper defects. Well, well uh, I get more questions, but we are on time. Okay, let's thank you. Thank you. Can I stop? Yeah, it's for you, right? Also, but you can know it. It's more or less the same, but this is the next one is for the time. Well, if we have time, we, we I ask my question. Is this one? Okay. Yes. This is Okay, and. The last talk of this session will be also by Perez Vallejo. It is called Coprous Oxide Film Film Deposit by Chemical Bar Deposition, Effect of Temperature and TEA. So it, it's okay. it, it, uh, the same that I presented before, but this is by a conventional process. It is in a conventional bar. Uh, when we use uh, ethylene glycol or something like that to, to, to heat the process. So just to make in some difference in, in this part from the other work, uh, in, in this process, we can obtain, uh, or we can control the thickness of the film in a very wide range of, of, fit, of thickness. Uh, I can obtain uh, films between 15 nanometers to more than two micro. But just by changing the copper source, the temperature, the amount of uh, retinolamine. So uh, I, I consider that these films are adequate for another or suitable for another application. For example, in the case of solar cells, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but uh, we, we can turn the conductivity of the material from the p to to m -tag. So at least for, for this method, we can pro produce, for example, the development uh, of a homojunction. So also, I, I work with this kind of, of solar cells. Uh, however, I didn't never obtain a very good uh, result with this kind of cells using my materials of copper, copper oxide uh, as an absorber of, of solar light and, and using zinc oxide uh, as an end type. However, in my case, at least I did not obtain good, good results. Uh, also, these materials can, can be used for uh, uh, in tandem solar cells because as if it has a very high band gap, it loses a, a lot of uh, part of the, the light. So it can be, it can be used in, in this, uh, this kind of, of, of solar cells. Uh, and also, it can be used in, in applications when we use uh, or we want uh, very high uh, res resistivity, for example, in sensor or photo detector. Huh? So, uh, well, this is exa exactly the same. This uh, here is the, the change. Instead of using uh, a micro reactor, I use direct the, the, the chemical the regular uh, bath. But uh, in the previous work, I, I only used uh, 45 uh, milliliters of the solution because of the reactor, the, the tube, 
the the pack uh, only was for, for around 50 milliliters so i need to to reduce uh, from the original original work that is uh, 100 uh, milliliters uh, and the time deposition that i use in, in at least in this work was around uh, four four hours and i varied the the temperature uh, from 60 to 80 Celsius degree, increasing in six uh, Celsius degrees uh, each sample. Uh, we, we use uh, exactly the same co copper sulfate as a copper source, uh, sodium citrate as a first uh, complexing agent, dextrose as a reducing agent, uh, triethylamine as a secondary complex agent, but, but in the, the amount, in this case, I use five and 10 milliliters. Uh, and we had used the, the pH around uh, 9.5 by adding some drops of uh, sodium hydroxide. At, at the end, we complete the solution with, with conventional water. And these are, are, are the results. And what, what I am looking for is how, how these peaks move. In, in this case, it's more notorious how the, the peaks move moves with the temperature. I, I try to move because I want to enhance the, the conductivity. At, at least in, in my case. Ha, however, for another application, probably uh, an, an, another conductivity is uh, is better. No? So, uh, by increasing the the temperature in both cases, I see a, a general tendency to enhance the crystallinity of, of the of the material. This is re related with the, uh, an increase in the, in the thickness, uh, mainly because of an increase in the temperature accelerates or uh, the rate of position, the formation of the of the particles in, in the solution, and, and consequently the thickness are, are, are thicker, no? thicker. However, it's very interesting that, that at higher temperatures, uh, we we observe a changing in the preferential orientation from the plane to two to zero zero to the one one one, which means uh, we obtain a uh, higher conductivity films. However, uh, as probably you, you know, when, when you uh, increase the thickness of the of, uh, material, uh, just by increasing the, the thickness, uh, we lost conductivity in the, in the material. So uh, even when we obtain a thicker uh, films oriented to the plane one one, these are thicker. So there is a, a balance in the con conductivity and, and resistivity. No? Uh, and in the other case, it's more, more or less the same. We, we observe uh, thick, thicker films uh, or more in intensive uh, peaks, uh, which move from the plane one one to, to the plane uh, to from the plane two zero zero to the plane one one. Uh, in all cases, we obtain only uh, cuprous oxide. We don't obtain in none case uh, cupric oxide or copper sulfide because at the beginning of the, of the process, in another report that, that we have uh, uh, published, uh, we observed that at the beginning of the, of the chemical bath, part of the copper sulfate is removed. So for example, at the beginning I have uh, 20, uh, 10 uh, nanometers, uh, the first five nanometers are removed, and then the, the second material start to work, uh, start to, to grow. This is the copper sulfate. So th that is the reason that in none of the case we ob we didn't observe uh, copper sulfide. These are the the parameters, the structural parameters of of, of the, the of these films. Uh, obviously, we observe an, an increase in the, the thickness in, in both cases, being more drastic when we use 10 milliliters of uh, of triethanolamine. Which is related, we, we have a higher control because we, the copper is higher uh, complex. So the, the, the ions or the, yes, the ions of copper are slow, slower uh, released to the solution. So it uh, helps us to have a greater control of the, of the growth or allowing to increase the thickness of, of the material. Uh, we observed this tendency that we, uh, found in the in the other uh, in the previous report and an increase in the two two zero zero uh, uh, peak, but at, at these uh, two temperatures we observe a, a, a decrease as, as as you can remember from this one. 
Uh, and also in, in the same way, we observe a, a decrease in, in this part, and we observe an increase in the uh, in the plane one one. So uh, at the end, we observe a, a decrease, a general tendency to to decrease the conductivity, but not in the in the same way that, as the previous report. We, we observe a, a, a decrease, but also a, sl a slightly increase because of the increase to the plane one one. Uh, for for different uh, uh, co conditions, uh, uh, we observe uh, we have obtained a higher crystallinity materials with decrease of temperature in both cases. As we can see, we we, we observe an, an increase in the uh, crystalline crystalline size, but also we observe an increase in, uh, in an increase in the lattice parameter A. This is a cubic structure. So this means we have a more relaxed uh, structure. So it implies that it is more relaxed. We have less defects, and in consequence, we have uh, a more resistive material. But but also this uh, relaxed relaxation in the structure promotes an increase in in, in the bunker, no? which is all all related. Uh, well, this is are the the values that I showed before, uh, but only uh, presented as uh, so a plot. Uh, for example, if we uh, take in consideration consideration uh, five milliliters of uh, triethanolamine in and the plane to two, this is the the red one plotted line. Uh, we observe an increase and then a, a decrease at seventy five uh, Celsius degrees. That is related with uh, a general tendency to, to decrease the conductivity, but it increases again at 75 uh, Celsius degrees. No, it's, it's, this is the, the, the explanation. Uh, and 80 Celsius degrees, we observe a uh, decrease in the, in the an increase in the plane to 200, and we observe also a decrease in the, in the conductivity. No? This is really, if you see in attention in, in the paper, more, more or less all, all con. Uh, conditions or fixes to this one, but not all of the in all of the cases. This is probably related with an increase in the in the thickness. Uh, well, these are the morphology of, of the materials. As you can see, we in this case we observe very well defined uh, particle with the increase in the in the temperature. Uh, this is related also with the orientation to the plane to 200. Zero zero. Uh, actually, uh, these triangular forms are reported for different uh, method deposition. For example, in the case of electron deposition, they obtain similar uh, uh, particles, uh, morphologies, and also related to the plane to 200 zero zero growth. So, uh, we have had ob obtained higher. Uh, Crystalline size, but but also higher partic particle size. No, probably for some uh, application, this is, this is good because we uh, have more uh, well-defined morphology, so we can uh, incorporate a second layer. Uh, for example, in, in the case of, uh, of of a solar cell, but in the case, for example, in the uh, we we want to develop a photocathode, but we want this uh, roof roof uh, surface because we want to increase the contact with uh, contaminant or with the solution. So, for example, in this case, uh, we're preferable for solar cell this one or for uh, photocathodes this one, other ones. And we observe more or less the, the the same tendency when we increase the amount of TEA from five to ten milliliters. We observe a very good, uh, well-defined morphology. And this is something I, I explained before. In the other case, in the transmittance, we didn't observe uh, this kind of fringe or interference construct, uh, constructive interferences. So these are related as the number of interferences increases. It, it means that we have a thicker fields. So if you have the time to see to see the paper, if you count the the waves, you you can uh, see that as the number of waves or fringe increases, the, the, we have a thicker film. Another aspect to to remark of this re report is that, for example, if we take uh, as an example the the black one that is deposited at uh, 60 Celsius degrees, you you see a very low amplitude. If we uh, took 
the 80 Celsius degrees, we observe a very high amplitude. This is related with the morphology of the surface of the material. So we observe a very rough material, or roughness in the surface, and we observe a minimal or less roughness than, than the other. This is the, the explanation of that. Uh, we observe a slightly increase in the band gap or a decay in the transmittance with, with the increase of the temperature of the position in, bo in both cases, which is related with an increase in the, in the band gap. No? This is related with the relaxation of the structure and to decrease in the urbach energy or the disorder. Uh, we observe uh, also or calculate the absorption, absorption coefficient. Also, we obtain a very, very good values of, of, of this material in the absorption region. However, it's clear that we, we observe a decrease in the absorption uh, coefficient uh, with the increase in the time, the uh, temperature deposition. Also here, uh, we observe a, a decay around here, around 40, 60, 40, 70 nanometers, which is related with the, with the band. Uh, we calculate the, the, the urbach energy, and in both cases, we observe a general tendency to, to decrease the band. Uh, it, it means uh, if we see the, the structure of uh, how you say, uh, density, density of state of the, of the material, if we see the, the balance and the condition, And less defects, so we have less, less disorder, so the distance is, is higher. So the, the urbach energy is, is lower and the disorder is slower, so consequently the, the amplitude is of the band gap is, is higher, no? and this is the, the, the tendency of, of that only plot. So at the end, we observe that if we have oriented uh, films to the plane 200, we have uh, it enhances the resistivity. And in the other case, if we have uh, orientation to the plane 11, we obtain uh, films uh, with higher co co conductivity. Uh, also, we obtain, uh, or this is more related also or explained by the disorder in the films which promotes a, a decrease or an increase in the conductivity, as, as you can see, as you want to, to see, but also a, a uh, an increase in the, in the band gap. No? So as the thickness of this material, these films are higher, actually we, we can make it uh, more uh, thick, thicker. For example, if we increase the, the amount of trethanolamine from 10 to 20 milliliters, we can, and we change uh, the copper, uh, sulfate to copper nitrate or copper uh, acetate, we can obtain uh, thicker films around 2.5 uh, microns. So it's, it's interesting for uh, solar cells, for example. This is the, the institution to who help. Well, we have time for questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the, the two works are very similar, no? The difference, the addition of the triethanolamine. The difference is the, the heating process. Ah, the, between this? Yes. Yes, the amount of triethanolamine. Okay. And heat, for example, you are presenting to well, high different temperatures, no? But yes. the difference between 65 and 70 is just yes. one high, five degrees. Yes. Five and degrees. you are presenting a very big difference, no? In the morphology. Yes. Uh, what is the reason for this? Uh, ah, because as the as we as we increase the uh, temperature, the reaction is uh, faster. So it, it, it is well known. For example, it's reported for it's faster. But what are the values? The uh, thickness values. Ah, the thickness. Yes, sure. It is the thickness. Uh, for example, in the case when we use uh, five milliliters, we go from uh, four. 100 uh, to okay, you pass, in five degrees you, you pass from 400 420 uh, to 700 more or less. 70 uh, okay with 20 degrees you are getting almost a double no yeah, double. 
but uh, in this case, it's it's higher because we have a higher complexation level of copper ions, so the, the releasing of the ions are slow, slower. It, uh, the materials uh, doesn't tend to precipitate in the bulk switch. Okay, one well, last question. If there are no more questions, uh, let's finish the session today. Yeah. Well, we have a, uh, in the afternoon, we have another session. Yeah.